Today's video is sponsored by Native Sons Goods, makers of the highest quality woven guitar, bag, and camera straps you'll ever see. Native Sons straps are handmade one at a time in the USA with unparalleled love and care. Click the link in the description to check out their new expanded lineup featuring all new 3-inch guitar straps. And remember, when you support my sponsor, you support this channel, and I sure appreciate it. Hello everybody, Brad the Guitar just here and welcome to Projects from the Vault. Uh, in case you didn't know, Projects from the Vault is a show that I've done one episode before this one and uh, what we do is we go through some of my old photographs where I've detailed some of the old uh, jobs that I've done repairing guitars. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stick around. Okay, our episode for today is going to center around this 1987 Guild I think it's a JF30 that I had uh, probably about five, six years ago, and this thing had lots and lots of problems. This had belonged to a street musician in New Orleans, and uh, it really shows. This thing had uh, kind of gone through hell. But you can see here around the sound hole a lot of the damage that had been done. This thing had definitely been around the block. It had uh, lived out in the streets of New Orleans in the sweltering summer heat probably. Uh, this street musician had really used the heck out of this thing. There are a couple of top cracks up by the uh, neck we're going to have to address. Here you can already see I've removed the fretboard. I've also added a little bit of filler material around the sound hole right there. You can see it. Uh, if I had not done that, you would see the wear was almost all the way to the pit guard he had worn this thing so much you can also see a lot of uh, a lot of gouges and things that have gone all the way through the finish so we're gonna have to add a little bit of finish to this whole area after we're done to kind of blend everything in uh, yeah this is a j30 dash what what does that say bh maybe You could also probably look up the date of this thing by the serial number I think that's how I dated it to begin with as a 1987. Uh, here is the inside where I'm repairing one of the cracks. Uh, you can see that is a neodymium magnet. Uh, I keep a few of these around for crack repairs. It's a really good way of doing it. Here's a shot down toward the rear of the guitar, down toward the end block, and you can see this has been converted into a, an acoustic electric. You can also see a couple of the uh, the hardware screw bolts and nuts that were added to uh, probably to hold the, the bridge down. You can also see how filthy this thing is. If you look way, way toward the back there, toward the end block, you can see all the dust and dirt and debris that's uh, been collected in this thing over the years. Like I said, this guy used this outdoors in New Orleans as a street musician for years and years and years. He may have even bought it new in 87, and I didn't get this until, I guess, must have been 2012, 2013-ish. A little bit better shot of the uh, bridge plate there with the uh, bolts. You can see the bridge plate isn't too badly eaten up, so we're not going to have to replace the bridge plate or anything major like that. I'm just going to leave this as is as far as the bridge plate. Uh, there is a little crack right there. You can you can kind of see it goes up under uh, that brace. This is toward, looking toward the front of the, or toward the uh, the neck block. But the idea here is to add a little cleat to stabilize that area there and also to uh, re-glue these braces to make sure they're nice and tight. This isn't a very good shot here, but you can at least see uh, the amount of wear that has been done around the sound hole. You can also see uh, the crack there that exists. Okay, in this shot, you can see I'm, I'm repairing the uh, second crack. I've already repaired that crack over there to the right of uh, the fretboard area. Uh, and you can see that one pretty clearly still. Uh, but now I'm addressing a second crack that's over uh, toward the, the left on this photo. And I'm using that neodymium magnet to hold in the new cleat. I'm also using the clamps there to hold down the pieces of uh, the top. Um, to make sure they get a good uh, good connection to that brace that's under there. Okay, here's a shot inside after the uh, attachment of that second cleat. Uh, you can see it there. It's, it's just a long piece of tongue depressor, and that's uh, what this is. It's a medical grade tongue depressor that I use for the cleats on projects like this. They actually are made of uh, really good grade of wood because they're medical grade. 
and uh, they tend to hold up very well. Uh, you don't have to make a big, thick cleat or anything, you know, to get a good repair. I could probably have shaped these to make them a little nicer looking, but I think my idea at the time was, you know, I'm just flipping this guitar. I'm fixing it to flip it, so I wasn't really all that concerned with what, what it looked like on the inside. If I'd taken a little more time, I could have actually shaped these uh, these pieces of cleat in order to, you know, make them more attractive but the main thing you want to do is make sure that your wood grain on the cleat is going the opposite uh, perpendicular rather to the wood grain on the top or whatever it is you're repairing I actually didn't you know I didn't do a great job of shaping that that's just a really quick quickly created cleat let's put it that way <laughs> but you can see there on the top of the photograph you can see the uh, neck block that's coming down you can see the crack that where it runs into the neck block uh, this is a common thing on a lot of a uh, lot of older guitars will do this they'll crack right there on both sides of the neck sometimes there's just so much downward pressure in that area that, that cracks can uh, easily occur. Um, but I re-glued it to the brace, also glued in that cleat, and that cleat is just there to hold the little lip down so that it doesn't pop up on you in that area. This is the other uh, crack on the other side of the neck block, and you can see there were two cleats added there. Uh, also, you know, of course, I re-glued the brace as well, and that's going to hold it. But these cleats are added just to make sure that the that it doesn't really set, try to separate again. I actually removed the neck on this because I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to be running into. So I removed the neck, uh, excuse me, the fretboard in anticipation of maybe having to do some more major work on this. And when I, I think what I'm showing here is uh, the replacement of a little sliver of the, the fretboard material that came off. So I'm just gluing that back down to get a nice smooth surface back on the uh, fretboard. This is after uh, spraying a little coat of nitrocellulose lacquer. I used an aged look, it's like an amber colored lacquer, uh, to get a blended look in, in here on this area. And we're also going to add some clear coat and sand it in between coats and things like that. I kind of skip all of that, but you can see where I've uh, taped off everything. You have to tape off the fretboard so that you can get a good uh, a glue connection later. Also, of course, taped off the uh, fretboard. Also stuffed the sound hole full of uh, material so that nothing gets inside the sound hole. I've seen a lot of people try to re refinish and overspray stuff and they didn't bother to do that and it's just a just a real pain when that happens. But you can see already uh, it's looking a little bit better because some of those areas that were gouged out all the way down to the uh, wood, the bare wood, have been kind of filled in. So it's it's just what this is meant to do is just finish over the area, blend everything in so it has a little bit of a better appearance. And you can uh, compare it to some of the former pictures here at the end. You'll you'll see why I did this. Here we are standing standing up on the couch, and this is kind of what you have to do sometimes if you're just. You know, if you don't have a real good place to put these things while everything is drying, here of course I'm reattaching the fretboard. You could use really long rubber bands instead of these clamps if you wanted to uh, do it a slightly different way. There's another shot of that. You can see, I don't know how many clamps I have on there, but it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, about nine or ten clamps at least. Here you can see on the other side of the neck I put some uh, pot holders and stuff like that that I kind of had laying around. And what that's doing is just preventing the clamps from making marks on the back of the neck. A lot of people forget this step and they end up marking up uh, their f the neck finish or the neck itself. Okay, here are all the clamps off. Uh, we haven't removed all the tape yet and just kind of getting a look at it here. And here we are with the fretboard reattached. You can see all of the finish that was worn off of this thing by this player, um, this street musician. And I would say he he played this this uh, finish off of this guitar because this thing was so well worn, so beaten. I think this was actually play wear and not him taking to it with uh, sandpaper. But you can see, you know, it looks pretty good. There is a little bit of a, it looks like a crack in the fretboard, but it wasn't. It was kind of a gouge that kind of went from uh, on the edge of the fretboard. So that wasn't really a huge deal. You could make that all disappear where those two pieces come together if you wanted to with finish. 
You can see the finish, uh, how it's kind of, you know, chipped off as it comes up to the fretboard. One could make all of that disappear. You just would go in there with paint brushes, with nitrocellulose lacquer, and just paintbrush lacquer into those areas and build up the lacquer and build it up until it all disappears. Here you can see the area where I did some refinishing and uh, it did sort of blend everything together. Uh, also refinished over the uh, the filler that I put around the sound hole there to kind of build that back up. What I had to do was put a piece of wood under that and, uh, and kind of hold it there while I built up the material and I just sort of uh, added more to it until it was sort of built up. Now I didn't want to make it perfect. I wasn't going for perfection here. I wanted to preserve actually the the look of this thing because it really looked cool. It looked well worn and well beaten and I loved the look of it. And I wasn't trying to mask that really. I was trying to just, uh, you know, sort of blend everything together. Just sort of add to the beauty and preserve the, the, the beauty of it that was already there. I wasn't trying to hide the, you know, the repairs or anything like that. Had I been doing that, I would have just chosen to refinish it. Because then you could really get in there and hide a lot of things if you refinished it entirely. Here's the end result. I think this thing came out really nicely. Uh, it sounded freaking phenomenal. Played great by the time I was done setting it all up. Really cool guitar. Just had a lot of mojo, man. You could just really feel it on this thing. The backstory, too, is just so cool. It having been a street musician's guitar who was a working street musician in New Orleans. Like I said, I wasn't trying to destroy the character of this, I was merely trying to uh, preserve it and give it a little bit of finish, especially in those areas where it had been worn down to bare wood. So yeah, that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you have, please hit subscribe down below. I'll probably have some more like this where we kind of go through old repairs that I've done. Where I don't have videos of the repair, but I do have photographs of the repair. So we might do a few more of these. For now, I'm going to leave you guys with, uh, with an audio sample of this thing. And we'll see you all later. Stepped into an avalanche It covered up my soul When I am not this hunchback that you see I sleep beneath the golden hill You who wish to conquer pain You must learn, learn to serve me well Strike my side by accident As you go down for your gold The cripple here that you clothe and feed Is neither star nor cold He does not ask for your company Not at the center, the center of the world
pedestal You did not raise me there Your laws do not compel me To kneel grotesque and bare I myself am the pedestal for this ugly hump at which you stare Do not dress in those rags for me I know that you are not poor don't love me quite so fiercely now When you know that you are not sure It is your turn, beloved It is your flesh that I wear